Alright, so this recording is a demonstration of how to get part two of the carry look ahead adder um, lab done. So question number one, in case you did not finish the circuits of K2 and K3 from the previous lab, you know, finish it now, and so on. Um, so the question is asking how many AND gates are needed in the K3 circuit. And to answer the question, we already have K3 finished the other day, and we counted, you know, basically there are three AND gates in this case. So it's also in the um, in the notes. So if you go back to the notes, let me go back to, I think, oh, this is subtraction. Let me get rid of that. Signed value, that's for next week. All right, so when we get back to here, when we look at the K3 term, so K3 uses um, 1, 2, and 3 AND gates. So um, so that's the answer to this particular question. OK, it is 3. And now we have the next one, which is, now that we have K1, K2, and K3 defined, instantiate one of each in the main circuit. All right, so there are instructions to do that. And then we. Um, we have the carry bits K0 to K3 from the previous question. I guess you know, the tunnel labeled Q should have all of the Q bits. These are the intermediate sum bits or the single digit sum bits. This means you have all the bits to compute the sum. Use a splitter in reverse, which is basically you know, turning it into a merger. So in this, to answer this question, you know, we are going to use the poke tool to poke the wire coming out of the merger of the K bits to the gate that computes the sum bits. Um, and it doesn't quite name which gate would compute the sum bits. So to get to this part of the question, you know, you're going to have to basically finish pretty much the entire circuit here with the exception of, you know, K3 as an output pin. So let's go take a look at the circuit that we have right now um, in main. So the first thing we need to do is to add the output pin, which is our sum. So the, this is the sum bit, and there are three bits in the sum. And that particular picture is also in the notes, or in the, in the lab description. And then we have another output pin, which only has one single bit, and that would be our K3. So now we have K3 over here. All right, so how do we get to the sum bit, right? How do we compute the sum? The first thing we need to do is to find out, you know, how the sum bit are, is defined. So when you go back to the notes, you know, the, um, the sum bit is defined, S of I is defined you know, back here, a little bit above. And a little more. There we go. So the sum bit is the R applied to Q and K. And R, in this case, is exclusive OR. So the question is, how do we find out that R is exclusive OR? And that part is discussed down. Um, let me see. There we go. So you know, we look at uh, R of x, y. And in the case of x and y being Boolean, or binary numbers, binary digits. So we can express it this way, but we can also use exclusive OR to describe it. So, there, so here we have it. Okay, technically there's a Boolean operator called exclusive OR that, ex that does exactly this. However, exclusive OR is not common, you know, in terms of CISP 360. So that's why we kind of define it this way to, to use the operators that we are used to. But to, to use a single operator to do it, it would be exclusive OR. So the answer is right here, that R is implemented by exclusive OR as a single Boolean operator. Um, so there we go. So we go back to the circuit, and then we pull an exclusive OR gate. Or we can just pull this one, okay? Just make a copy of this one, because it is an exclusive OR gate with the proper width. 
and the proper number of input bits. Okay, so there we go. And we also know that one input to this exclusive OR is going to be the qubits because according to the notes, and I think that's down uh, above a little bit here, so it defines right here, your know, S of I is R of Q I K I. So Q I K I are coming from, guess what? The Q and the K bits in the circuit. So to do that, Q is easy because we got Q figured out already right here. So if you don't want your, your wires to be flying all over the place, you know, feel free to use tunnels. So we're going to use a tunnel, put it here, and flip the facing because the connecting point is only on one side. So we have to flip it, and now we got that. So now the question is, what about the other input of the exclusive OR? Well, it's going to be the K bits, right? It's going to be the, all the carry bits. We don't have all the carry bits yet, because we only got one circuit here that is handling K1. So we're going to have to pull you know, K2 and K3 here so that we end up with uh, K1, and this one is going to give us K2, and then this one is going to give us K3, right there, okay. Um, if you, you know, like what I do here, you know, if you did not label the circuit, uh, if you really want to find out which circuit we are talking about, you can always use the property pane here. So we can see, you know, the one being selected is K3, and if I go back to select this one, it's K1, and the hover over mouse pointer thing also tells you what, uh, which component we're dealing with. So even without um, the proper documentation, you can still kind of get it done. Uh, although personally, you know, if I have enough time, I would rather uh, label each circuit correctly. And I just put a connection to the wrong port. Okay, so I gotta be careful here. There we go. And then we have the G because the second Y is the G. And then we have K0. There we go. And there we go here. All right. So the output of the K1 circuit is going to give us K1. The, K, the output of K2 is going to give us K2. And similarly for K3. So now we got the four carry bits, right? Because we got K0 here. Most people, initially at least, make the mistake of connecting these three to a merger and then put, it, you know, put the other end of the merger over here. That would not be correct because bit zero of the sum depends on bit zero of Q and bit zero of the Ks. This is bit one, okay? Bit zero is here. So that means, you know, bit zero, bit one, and bit two, they need to go, they need to go to a merger. And bit uh, K3 is on its own to, get, to go to the output pin called K3 itself. So that is, um, that's one of the more, more challenging part of this particular lab is, you know, to uh, find the correct way to connect the K bits to what I would call the merger. Because even though it's called a splitter, because most people read from left to right, so we are having a two-bit, you know, two-bit wide input into individual, you know, split end of single bit. Um, but that's really just a matter of perspective. So if I flip the direction, let me fix um, the uh, you know, configuration first. But if I change the facing to west, okay. And we're still reading from left to right. Now it becomes a merger because the split end is on the left, and then the merged end is on the right. And since most people most people read from left to right, um, it you know it becomes a merger um, in this case. So now we put a merger here. Okay, there's no need to name it. So we just put a merger here, and then we pick K zero to go to bit zero of this merger. So this you know, uh, requires a working knowledge of what a splitter is and how it works. And we encountered the concept of a splitter 
Um, a while back, actually, you know, from the first lab, we have already used the concept of a merger. But in this particular case, it is even more important to understand what 0, 1, and 2 mean when we're looking at the split end of a, of a splitter. And now we hook up the last one, which is this one here. Oops, oh, I just dragged the, the whole component. So let's go. Let's just connect this one all the way to K3, and that completes the circuit. The circuit is now entirely done. So, um, so the difficulty or the challenge that some people experienced, you know, when we are doing this lab, really has to do with, you know, how we define sum. And the key is to kind of read the notes and keep track of the definitions. Because S is defined here, okay, it is the R of the Q and the K. But what about R? You know, how is R defined? You know, R is defined earlier, okay, in C code as a very general expression, you know, but that's for any base, okay? So this R definition is for any base, or specifically in this case, it's for base 10. But when you're dealing with base 2, you don't want to use the base 10 definition because that requires arithmetic operations because we want to translate everything into logical slash boolean operations. So in that case, we are we are, we have to go to this section here. But how does the computer do this using transistors? Because this entire section uh, is about translating arithmetic operations into Boolean operations. And that includes what we need to do in order to compute the single digit partial sum when we're adding two single digits, which is R. So in this case, you know, this particular paragraph, you know, right from here all the way ending here, is responsible to tell you that we can use an exclusive OR operator to implement R as a function. So that, you know, basically understanding that part will basically, you know, make, um, it will remind people to use an exclusive OR gate here with Q on one side. So the other challenge, you know, which I have already uh, discussed a little bit earlier, has to do with, you know, what do we connect to this, you know, these, the splitter slash merger that eventually connect to the other input port of the exclusive OR gate. And that one um, is, it really boils down to, you know, understanding bitwise operations. Because bit zero of, you know, whatever this wire is, is the exclusive OR bit zero of this wire and uh, exclusive OR with uh, bit zero of this wire here. But bit zero of this wire has to connect to K0 because you know that is how we want to use, that is what we want to use to compute uh, S of I because of the earlier definition that we see here. S of I is the result of applying R of Q of I and K of I. So, so those are the key pieces that are important for the second part of the carry look ahead um, lab. Okay. Um, so um, I do acknowledge, okay, that you know people have said that you know they could not understand the notes, that they are lost, that they're confused. But I cannot act on just saying, you know, just having people to say, oh, this is confusing, or I'm lost, because that doesn't that doesn't give me specific in you know information to change anything, right? Because you know what. It, without knowing you know what is causing the confusion or what is causing people to be lost um, you know I cannot you know have specific action items so um, I think in general um, the concept you know that I'm trying to or the practice that I want to promote to the whole class is really to read the notes carefully. I mean, you know, if people do not read the notes, do they, if they do not read the modules from end to end carefully, and you know, just reading and making sure they really you know understand the concepts one you know one by one, um, I can't help. Okay, because it is a requirement. Okay, this is an assumption that I would put on people that they would read the notes, okay? And they would read it not superficially, but really try to understand the concepts, you know, sequentially. So if someone tells me, okay, I'm using this as an example. So if someone is to tell me, you know, I, you know, do not understand, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to find an example here. 
uh, k of i is rather easy because only addition da, 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 can okay so if someone you know uh, tells me that this part is not understood then I can use examples right you know, in this case I can use examples um, with probably one of these three already has an example of k of 1 being a 1 and maybe I'll give another example of k of 1 being a 0 and then I can show okay these are the values of x0 y0 you know and it results in k of 1 being a 1 because of these reasons so I can actually use example to to illustrate it or connect it to examples so being able to pinpoint okay which statement is confusing is important to help me um, add additional links or references in my notes all right so um, I think I'm done with this recording and uh, I hope you guys would spend some time to take a look at the solution and see if you can relate that solution in Logisim to the module itself which probably means you know another uh, you know, quick reading through the notes you know just to make sure that you know okay this part of the circuit is related to this part of the definition you know so it's quite important to review you know, all of that so that everything are now hopefully you know connected